Come in. Gather round. OG7 back here. Hey guys, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. There's no victory or glory. I did this, um, this uh, fight scene movie last night, dude, about these two uh, different gangs, bro. And I'm beat the fuck up, and I got to go back on a movie set today to do the bodyguard movie, man. And, uh, dude, my um, my body's just killing me. They had to give me some painkillers on set last night, and then uh, I got home and I took some, uh, um, sorry, guys, um, nighttime NyQuil. There's a PM NyQuil, whatever. The blue stuff, man. I drank it, man, and I took a bunch of acetaminophen or whatever it is. The, the scientific name for aspirin, man. I'm tired of you guys correcting me, man. I got a speech impediment, man. I got trauma to the head from receiving, I don't know if it was shrapnel or a bullet in combat, but whatever, it pierced my skull, man. I almost died because I woke up after being in a concussion. And my, my frontal cortex, bro, I can't, sometimes I can't articulate properly or process my thoughts. And um, I'm going to be transparent because I don't give a ish no more. Maybe because I'm hurting so bad this morning, I got a fucking... Go punch in because they, I don't know about the rest of the world, bro. I'm sorry if I'm not the smartest motherfucker. But uh, here in Vegas, the time got pushed back an hour. Like, so, you know what I mean? I got to thank the Lord for that because, bro, I took the nighttime uh, NyQuil, bro, with some acetaminophen, acetaminophen, whatever the fuck it's called. And I slept good. I had some crazy ass dreams. That's why I had to make this video before I go into work, guys. But uh, anyway, man, I did the fight scene, bro. And it was just, man, you know, I just want to share a couple things with you because uh, this is a new one I'm doing today. When I first um, switched my channel genre, when I first came on the YouTube in 2016, I was teaching strictly. Um, Flow-based martial arts, that's what, I, that's what I specialize in. That's why people pay me. That's why I got this job in Southeast Asia, bro. A lot of people say they do flow martial arts, but see, when you grow up being a small, mixed dude, light-skinned, pretty boy dude, getting your ass whooped by dark-skinned, savage dude, you got to learn very quickly how to fight bigger, stronger guys because, bro, this is the whole thing I want to share with you guys, bro. I'm not the baddest motherfucker, the toughest motherfucker, the craziest motherfucker. But people always bring smoke to me, bro. And one thing about me, bro, I ain't looking for no smoke. And I don't want no smoke. But if you bring some smoke, I've learned, bro, you can't run from a bully, bro. You can't run from somebody aggressing upon you. You can't run from somebody trying to hurt you, bro. The best thing I've learned as a little dude, bro, and I'm still a little dude. I'm going to tell you why. The best thing I learned as a little dude is when somebody's aggressing upon you, bro, you got to meet that You got to meet that force, bro. You got to meet it because the more you retreat, the more momentum they get and the more advantage they have on you. And I'm not trying to get all airy, fairy, philosophical on you this morning because I'm in so much pain, bro, but I got to go to work. But anyway, I'm just saying I learned that. So the best way to meet the force is to blend with it, bro. And I just learned that through osmosis. And that's why I tell you guys about uh, it's important to take up cage fighting and get your ass beat, bro. And a lot of you guys, man, even you guys on my Patreon, bro, I'm going to tell you how it works. There's different, there's different tiers on my Patreon. And the reason being is... Some guys just want to, you know, give me a donation just to support me, bro. They ain't really caring about the different content over there. They just be like, hey, OG, man, I, I really appreciate your content. So they pay me the $2. That's the warrior level, right? That's just like a donation. And then the second tier is a $5 level. War, the $5 level is um, prison workouts where I teach you guys, like, how prisoners work out that separates them from you soft motherfucking pretty boys i call you guys the beach boy body dudes the gym bros bro i call you guys that motherfucking shit because here's the difference between prison dudes and you dudes that put your baby oil on and you're so pretty in the mirror you pretty motherfuckers i make videos about 
And that's okay, man. You know, I, I understand. I never been a pretty motherfucker. Like, even when I was pretty, I wasn't a pretty motherfucker because I always got in fights. And I'm not trying to make fun of any of my cousins, so I'm going to share this with you real quick, and I'm going to get back on topic. I got two different sets of, of cousins, man. So on my dad's side, like the Puerto Rican dudes, man, you know, they're all like Puerto Rican, Spanish. You know, they look, you know, they're just, Puerto Ricans are beautiful people. And then you, you get the fact that my dad had eight brothers and seven sisters. You know, some of my, my uncles and, and, and aunts married Asian people, or they married white people, or they married black people, or they married other Puerto Rican people, or they married Mexican people. I mean, because we're, we're all multicultural. We don't trip like that. We find, you find love where you find it. So a lot of my cousins on that side are very beautiful. Like they, they're a male model beautiful. I'm telling you, man, just beautiful. <laughs> they fall into two different camps. Like some of them is womanizer, pretty boys like Prince, you know, so dainty and just always in the mirror and stuff. And you know what I'm saying? All that. And they're not gay, bro. They're just, I call them effeminate. And they dress nice and they smell good. And they get all the women back east because women always, I just realized women always love flashy things. I never really realized it till just a couple of days ago. I know that's going to sound stupid, but. But then we go to nightclub and you got these savage barbarians. And I'm not saying, bro, listen, man, I'm, I don't have time to argue with you guys. I'm not saying all big, tall, dark skinned dudes are savage barbarians. I'm saying that. A lot of the big, tall, dark skinned dudes I grew up with back east, they're very physical dudes. They solve things with violence. They get women because they're very tall and dark and muscular, man, and they're just savages, right? I'm not saying all big, tall, dark dudes are like that. I met some tall, dark dudes that's into fucking poetry and fucking, you know what I'm saying, ballet and shit, bro. It's a lot of different. I'm saying the ones I grew up with. So back east when i was a kid man you can go into nightclubs they didn't check ids like if you had some facial hair you was kind of tall and big so we go in these nightclubs and man my pretty boy cousins is just pulling women bro nah they pulling more women than me they're so they're beautiful men follow me they're just so pretty and then the big darshan dude's like oh man you pretty light-skinned motherfucker i'll rip your fucking face off and here's my cousins man not making fun of any of this the puerto rican side oh man just don't hit my face man please man don't hit my face and I'm looking at them, bro, like this, bro. And they say, you got a problem, you pretty yellow motherfucker? I said, man, check this out, homie. I ain't that pretty yellow motherfucker. I'm a different motherfucker, man. Whatever you want to do, motherfucker, you, we can do it. And back then, my name wasn't OG Silverback. Let's just call me, you know, <laughs> chimpanzee dude from Planet of the Apes, the new one, the, the chimpanzee general. He was a savage. So I wasn't quite as big as I am now, but I was pretty swole. And then the, the other dark skin dudes is like, uh, <laughs> no, that's chimpanzee, dude. I did I did time with him in Maximum Security YA. Man, he's on some savage shit. And they would back up off of my cousins because of me. So I'm just saying. So anyway, on my on my mom's side, the West Indian side, they got some big, tall, savage cousins, man. They even on some physical shit, just fighting all the time, man. You just, like, we be eating breakfast and shit. No, we be eating dinner. I remember one time. And in our in our household, it's like four families. So it was a special day on Sundays. That's the only time we got meat. So we we normally eat like um, rice and beans and shit and a bunch of bread, right, on welfare. And then you, you all get one piece of chicken, like a drumstick or a thigh. And then here was the rule in the house, you know. Oh, after you eat all the food on your plate, like the big-ass pile of beans and the big-ass pile of rice and you all that fucking bread and shit. Then you can get another piece of chicken. So you got like 10 dudes sitting at the fucking table and it's only three pieces of chicken left, bro. But the rule of the house, man, and the, and the, and the, and the dads and the moms enforce it. They'll whoop your ass if you don't clean your plate because you're starving kids in Africa and Nairobi and shit. So everybody trying to scarf down their food. I'm a little wimpy dude trying to scarf. But my cheeks is full. You, you poor dudes have been on welfare. You know what it's like when you're shoving down some food, man, and you, you don't. And I'm trying to get it in. <laughs> so I put the last bit of food in my mouth. And I go to grab for the chicken. And my big, strong, savage cousins, bro, they, they going to grab at the same time. And I'm just a little wimpy dude. They elbow me out the way. Watch this, guys. <laughs> and they then they get to fighting, bro. So I've seen a lot of fights. So the reason that's important, I'm sharing with you, I'm getting back on track. Ever since I was a little dude, 
I've always had to fight bigger dudes. So even though I was taking Taekwondo and boxing, let me share this with you guys because I had a... Oh! The other day I was on the other movie set. The uh, I can't tell you the name of it, sorry. And uh, there was some other savages there. There was another Puerto Rican dude. He's a retired special forces. And we was talking about some little dudes that we train with because uh, I train at, I train at three different places guys I want to get this clear because on my shorter videos of two minutes I can't get my points across for the ADHD crowd so I get to get straight to the topic here um, I'm gonna get to the topic of this video but I'm just giving you a backstory so I train at three different places man one we're gonna call it movie stunts this is what you guys got to get clear. Movie stunts is falling off of buildings, getting put on fire. It's a thing called a jerk vest. So when they shoot you, like when you go see this new movie, I'm in Bermuda Island, when they shoot you with a shotgun, the shotgun's not, I mean, it's a real shotgun, but what comes out of the end is just fire. Like there's, it's a blank, I guess it's called. There's no, there's no lead or shells or slugs, bro. Sorry, it's early. And so when you shoot the shotgun, bam, you know, it's got a little recoil, but you got to sell it. So the, the stunt school teaches you how to sell it, you know, especially if you've been in the military, you shot weapons before. Because you can tell a motherfucker that never shot a weapon before because they'd be like, so you, they don't, you know, they never shot a real weapon. But me, I know what a, I know what a pump shotgun feels like. I've shot them. And so you do, you do the recoil, and then the, the flame comes out. And the dude that you shoot, they got what's called a jerk vest on him because... This is how you can tell the um, the budget of a of a movie that you watch by the special effects. So the special effects with a, with a jerk vest is without a jerk vest, the director go, "Hey, big man, when he shoots you with that shotgun, man, you gotta just you know explode back like the the momentum of the blast, you know." And you know some guys can try to sell it, but then when they got a jerk vest on you, which is this vest they put on underneath your clothes that's got cables in the back. And then uh, it's, 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 it's connected to these weighted sandbags on in, in, on the scene, behind the scenes, right? On the prop wall. So then when they shoot you with the shotgun, they drop that. They drop the weighted sandbags. It really looked like you got shot with a shotgun. So that's stunt school. Falling down steps, getting thrown out buildings, getting put on fire, jerk vests, all that stuff. But then there's, martial, there's movie martial arts fight school, bro. They teach you how to fight for movie, martial arts, movie, stunt school. Oh, they teach you how to ride horses and shit and, and drive cars. Stunt school is just for regular movies, and it's okay, bro. I'm just telling you, I had to do stunt school because you got to become stunt certified to join the stunt actors, stunt, stunt actors Guild or whatever, the Stunt Guild Union or whatever. But then there's, there's movie martial arts fight school, bro, and it teaches you how to fight. And martial arts, and for those of you non-paying broke motherfuckers, it's all right, baby. I'm just here to let you know, man. Like I'm making so many money, so many movies, bro. This is what you guys don't understand. And I'm a okay. So I got to give you a break and let you know what the, the top of today's video is. OG Silverback reacts real and raw to the comments on his channel. So this ain't something new, man. And I'm gonna get back to the beginning, but let me finish. So. Anyway, movie martial arts fight school teaches you how to fight for martial arts. So I'm going to give you a quick example for you non-paying motherfuckers that don't believe in investing yourself. So this is what I'm, I'm giving you a slight advantage of what I'm teaching over on Patreon. So let's just say I got a, I got a twin. And just so you know, if I got a twin, I'm his evil doppelganger. And just so you know, man, my brother who died, my middle brother, I got three, I had three brothers. I got two brothers now. But my middle brother, we look more alike than than my other brothers. Like, I'm the oldest, so my brother underneath me, he's real dark skinned with, with 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 sky blue eyes and straight black hair, bro. I'm talking about sky blue eyes. It's weird. He looks like an alien, but that's just how he was born. So then my middle brother who died, man, he was more like um, he was more like a reddish dude, and he had he had green eyes, and he had this really funny. <laughs> textured curly hair bro but he was he was a pretty dude and then my, my baby brother is like he's like a white dude with red freckles and a red afro right 
So in the summertime, I'm just sharing with you, in the summertime when I go to beach a lot, I get red too, but normally I'm just this, I'm a pasty, like a pasty brown color, right? Fuck. I'm a pasty brown color, but in the summer I get red too. So in the summer, they, they people used to confuse us, man, and the only way they knew us differently, um, my eyes are hazel, my brother's eyes are green. Yeah. Yeah, his, his eyes are, his eyes were green and I, mine are hazel, so they just, so from far away, they'd be like, but back then they used to call me little Chim- chimpanzee. Hey, little chimpanzee, what's up, man? And then they get up on it's my brother, and they'd be like, "Oh, my bad." He's like, "Don't worry about it. it always happens." So anyway, we were about the same height and weight. So let's just say, and they thought we was twins, but we wasn't. But uh, he's a, he was a good dude, and I'm an evil dude, just so you know. So let's just say we're mirror opposites. We're same height, same weight. So everything. So let's say we're we're fighting over the last piece of chicken. And I'm just going to give you a demonstration of the efficiency. So when I put my dukes up, man, first of all, I don't even ball my fists up. I'm more like this. And so then when I'm striking, guys, I'm striking like this. Look, well, for this efficiency, I'm going to keep it simple for you. So let's say you put your dukes up like this, right? I'm squared up. So when I'm punching in real life, this is how I'm punching, man. Look, guys. Douche. I'm punching straight in there, man. Douche. Oh, make it easier. Here's how I punch, right? Because this is all you guys going to be talking about. I was just sit back. If you know martial arts, you know you're supposed to turn your fist. Shut the fuck up, man. I'm just talking for a point. So for all of you who want to correct every little thing, this is a proper punch in martial arts, right? So I'm going to punch a dude, and you rotate it, man. So you hit with these two knuckles here. Bam, because if you hit with these knuckles like I've done in the past, you'll break them. And you hit like that, right? Here's how you punch in movies, bro. Like that. Now, I know what you're going to say. Some people in real life, OG, them like them cowboys and shit, man, them big Simone dudes, that's how they punch, man. And the big black dudes you're talking about, them savages, they punch like that because they winding up the knock, they winding up the Mississippi knock your head off. I understand that, but I, don't, I told you, dude, I don't, I don't fight with force. I fight with efficiency. So I'm coming straight in, bow. I believe in the Bruce Lee one-inch punch. I don't. Bro, if you punch in the right areas, you don't got to fucking wind up, bro. Plus, you're telegraphing. But the difference between real life martial arts, why I didn't get in my first roll, because I was punching in tight like this. See how you're tight? Your shoulders are tight, bro? Look. I was I was doing my katas and stuff. They didn't like it. But now I know movie martial arts, which is this. Look, watch this. I'm going to punch you. Watch this. Like that. Then, last but not least, I go to traditional combat sports, martial arts places where we do fucking punching and kicks with bags, wrapping up your hands, putting on shin protectors, kicking like the big bags, the speed bags. Then your your homies got these um, individual pads you kick and punch, man, for your timing and stuff. And then you actually do some light sparring where you punch and kick each other because... That's the only way you can know where you're really at, man. Then, on my own, with my martial arts instructor, I do what's called traditional static martial arts, like combat hapkido, commando krav maga, karate, um, taekwondo. Um, oh, wait, wait, sistema. All that kind of stuff where it's like, oh, dude chokes you. And then you do this, and you do that, and you do that. And I do all that because there's not one there's not one perfect martial art that's going to fit everything. And I there was a there, there was a debate last night with these young fighter dudes cuz there's some tall upcoming UFC dudes that do movies as well, tall young dudes like in their 20s and shit. And I wish that I didn't know about movies back then, man. But anyway, these tall, slow savages, man, that's currently training at the UFC, they do movies too because um, just so just so you know how it works, when the UFC, when you're trying to get into UFC to make these millions of dollars that the top fighters make, you know, yeah, you do get sponsored and stuff, man. You have sponsorship and trainers and stuff and supplement companies, but you're not making like multi-millions until you like what's called the top card in the UFC, bro. So, yeah, maybe they're making like, you know, 100000 man. But that's not really a lot of money, bro. Just for you guys that don't know, if you don't, you haven't made 100000 that's really not a lot of money after taxes and shit. 
So maybe they make it a hundred thousand, but they do extra stuff on the side. Like a lot of them do bouncing work. Like I was doing bodyguard work, and they do these movies. So I'm just saying. I mean, it's a small circle here in Vegas. So anyway, they had a debate last night. I was just sitting there. They don't know me, man. Like I don't know everybody. I know some people, and but there's a lot of people that do movies. So I'm sitting there waiting to go to wardrobe, right, for my character. And these it was about a group of these five young up-and-coming savage UFC fighters, like they're cage fighters, right? And they was talking like, yeah, man, that OG was talking that old fucking Krav Maga shit, like he's some expert, and they, they pumping him up, man. Man, they don't know, man. I'll fucking single leg take it down his ass. I'll sweep his fucking ass. I'll judo test. I ground and pound his ass. I'm just sitting there listening because their belief is that just like Joe Rogan used to say that that traditional martial arts stuff don't work. And that's why here I tell you guys, well, my Patreon tell you guys to blend it up. And I tell you what I think is the best blending up. So anyway, I just said all that to let you know that, dude, like I've always fought bigger, stronger dudes. So I pretty much got this flow thing down. And that's what makes my martial arts more acceptable in the, in the movie um, genre. So anyway, man, let me get to the top of today's video because... I don't even know what the fuck I told you guys all that, to be honest. And I apologize because, like, a lot of these guys come on here talking about, oh, man, he wasted 15 minutes of my life. I can never get back. And this is what I want to say to you, poopy pants. And I'm not apologizing because I'm honorary this morning. Like, they got these they got these Snickers commercials out where they got this, um, this really hairy, ugly dude, and he's screaming and hollering. And then they throw him a Snickers and he eats it and he turns out to be Marilyn Monroe. So those little young dudes who don't know who Marilyn Monroe was, she was the template for the blonde bombshell back in the 60s. She had sex with the, the president and his brother at the same time. She was like, woo-wee, you know, back then, woo-wee. I, I think her name was Norma Jean. I don't remember. And I don't really give a fuck because I'm tired. I got to get ready to go in here and I'm sore as fuck, man. This is what this is how you separate the winners from losers. Like right now, man, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. So I'm split in half. And just so you guys is clear, I always wear my big baller stuff on the right side because the right to me, I'm just telling you how I think. Right represents righteousness, light, goodness, and children and kitty cats and puppies and turtles, man. All the good things in life. Flowers and birds and bees and shit. The harp music. Doo -doo 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 -doo, all that. I wear my military barbarian fucking this thing here. If you don't know what it is, fuck you. I wear that on my left side because I represent my depressive behavior. Everything that's dark and savage and barbaric and, 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 and carnivore. All the shit that people are scared of in the dark, I, I, I represent that on that side. And I always try to balance it. That's why it's a balancing act. I go on these movie sets, so I always go more to the right. But they can see that there's a darkness in me, and that's why I get these roles. But I, just to keep everybody cool and civil and nobody freaked out, you know what I mean? I just play this nice role right here, so I'm acceptable. But deep down, motherfuckers know I'm a demon, homie. So anyway, man, um, I don't even know why I said that, man, so... uh. Let me get into the topic of today's video, man. So when I first started my YouTube channel, I was doing this flow-based martial arts, man. You know what I mean? And I was training with this dude. I ain't going to say his name because I think he's a bitch. But I was training with this dude. He was teaching me Sistema, man, which is the Russian martial art. And this, just so you know, this dude was my Japanese jiu-jitsu, Sibukan jiu-jitsu, ninjutsu um, instructor, man, for... I trained with this guy for 15 years, bro, and I thought he was my friend. So anyway, man, I would train with him, and I've always done this, guys, ever since I got out of the belly of the beast. I'm going to be honest with you. I've always gone to three or four different dojos because, bro, I don't give a fuck. Dude's telling me, hey, man, if you train here, you can't. This ain't, hey, man, this ain't Cobra Kai Karate Kid, motherfucker. I'm paying you good money, dude. I can do what the fuck I want, bro. That's like, you know, I remember when I was a kid. I remember when I was in prison. This is what they told me when I was in prison. I would go to the Muslim services because my father's a Muslim. My father does Islam. Well, now he's converted to, he's a Buddhist. And then my mom's a Christian, right? But when we moved to this country, we was Catholic. So I go to the Christian church, and then they'd be like, Hey, man, we saw you over at the Catholic 
services. You can't do that. It's like, man, I can do what the fuck I want. Then I go to the Catholic services. They'd be like, hey, man, we saw you over at the Muslim services. You can't do that. I said, man, I do what the fuck I want. Then I'm going to the Muslim services. Like, hey, my man, you can't be going to the Christian services. I do what the fuck I want, bro. That's what you guys don't understand about me. I do what the fuck I want, and I, 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 I orchestrate my life in such that the kind of jobs I had, I'm just sharing with you when I was in corporate America, the kind of jobs I had, I chose the kind of jobs where I can play this role as an Ur- Urkel dude and then get off work and be a savage. You got to find the jobs that fit your lifestyle. So anyway, in martial arts community, bro, and no offense to anybody here in Vegas because I got lectured on it here too. But in martial arts community, if you study one martial art, they don't believe you should study another. I'm just talking about traditional martial arts. UFC is different. That's why I like UFC. I believe in UFC and and, uh, and uh, cage fighting because they understand. You got to have ground game. You got to have transitional game. You got to have punching and kicking, knees and elbows. That's the smart way of doing it. But you're telling me, oh, because I'm taking karate, bitch, I can't take uh, – Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, man, fuck you, man. So anyway, I don't even know why I told you that, man. I'm fucked up right now, man. I'm just so, I'm hurt, man. So anyway, today, man, oh, so when I first started my YouTube channel, I was doing, I was doing flow bait <laughs> martial arts, right? Training with this dude. He would let me shoot these, uh, shoot these videos at his gym. So I was blending Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, uh, Sistema, and then I'm an expert in Commando, Krav Maga, Krav Maga, and uh, Judo. And I was doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I was making these videos. So, man, before I learned from Big Herc and Big Ant how to um, have my comments before I release them to the channel, dudes is on there just clowning me, guys. Check this out. Oh, you said back, you a bitch. You don't know how to fight. And you fat. You out of shape. You got bitch tits. I'll whoop your ass. And I'm like, man, I'm <laughs> Hey, bro, I didn't know about YouTube and trolls. I was like, motherfucker, here's the address, motherfucker. And, uh, oh, man, you lucky I'm in, you because I lived in Central California. It's like, oh, fool, you lucky I'm in L.A. Because I come up and see, I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to be in L.A. for this fucking karate tournament, motherfucker. Here's the date and here's the time. And dudes wouldn't show up, guys. Follow me. This is how I learned about keyboard warriors and trolls and soft motherfuckers, soft motherfucker tree jumper motherfuckers. Man, anybody that's been following my channel, you know, man. I used to po- post up where I was going to be at, the date, the fucking time. I would Google map it, put it in the fucking thing, bro. And they just kept talking shit. So, man, one time I just got so mad, bro. Uh, you know, I'm going to just give you an example. Don't don't shut me down on YouTube. I'm just, I'm just showing these soft motherfuckers what I did. So, one time, bro, I pulled out a whipping, man. And it, and it wasn't this, but I'm just giving you an example. So, I pulled out a weapon. Hey, look here. You soft troll motherfucking cell soldier motherfuckers. Hey, man, you can meet me here at this time and date, man. This is the location, the dojo I trained at and everything. And you motherfucker, whatever you want to do. We can do fisticuffs. We can do this. We can do whatever you want to bring with your homies. I don't give a fuck because you a soft motherfucker. And I made that threat on YouTube, right? Hey, guys, they shut my fucking channel down. Like, oh, you have violated the YouTube community policy. And for this type of action, there's no warning. And they just shut my shit down, bro. So then, bro, I contacted YouTube and I had to tell him that, you know, I got a letter from my psychiatrist and he was saying that he feels that YouTube is therapeutic for me to talk about my experiences in combat and my anger management because he believes in journaling. You know, he doesn't really agree with the martial arts aspect, but he encouraged me to journal on YouTube. And so then I provided YouTube with my disability and stuff and all this and my from my counselor. So they they reinstated my channel, but they said I gotta I can't be violent and I had to change the genre. So those of you who follow me, you remember when my channel came back, I just switched it up to PUA because see, hey bro, I'm bipolar. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I don't take meds for it, but I'm a bipolar motherfucker. That's how I can recognize it. So on my right side, remember is the feminine and stuff, the, the all this the light and stuff. I just went totally from martial arts to Venusian arts. So I was teaching dudes how to pick up women and stuff because I've I got a lot of experience with women, bro. And so dudes, he once again was coming on there. Oh, man, you old fat motherfucker. You don't know nothing about women. You a bitch yourself, and you gay, and you soft, and all that. So then, the dude, I was just I went, I was just like going crazy again, man. And so I was just like, making uh reaction videos yeah i was making reaction videos bro 
And it was it was it was working out pretty good my reaction video. So let me tell you what happened. <coughs> I was working as an IT security consultant at the Pebble Beach Concourse at Pebble Beach Monterey. If you don't know where Pebble Beach is, you need to Google it. So anyway, there was a big swole black dude come in there, man, with this fucking bomb ass Mercedes, man, because it was a, it was a it was a Pebble Beach Concourse where all the all the millionaires and billionaires come from all over the world with their exotic cars, right? And show them off. It's like a car show. So I saw this big black dude, big swole dude. I asked him who he was. He said, my name's Big Hurt. I got a prison channel. And then I was like, you know what, man? I, I said to myself, I want to help dudes, man. Because back then, bro, I wasn't talking about prison when I'm trying to explain to you. I was talking about martial arts, how to pick up women. Because I was still working in corporate America. And I had I had altered my name in order to work, which is a lie. When you alter your name, it's a lie. You're not telling the truth. But, dude, I'm not defending myself. I'm just being honest with you, bro. When you're on parole, your parole officer tells you, hey, man, you got a job? No, nah, man, every time I put on the application, if you have a felony, please explain. I put down, I shot some people in, in voluntary manslaughter. I can't get a job. Hey, motherfucker, if you don't have a job next week, motherfucker, I'm violating you, sending you back in the belly of the beast so you can see dudes butt graping each other. And I'm like this, man, you know, I got a moral dilemma on the right side. Like, oh, shit, man. I've been, I've been, fill, I fill out 500 applications. I checked the felony box like they told me to do in my, my, my parole classes. And I can't get a fucking job, man. But then the German dude was like, nah, man, fuck what he talking about, man. Hey, man, I don't never check the felony box, man. Them fools got to do their research. I put no. I've never been in trouble. So guess what, guys? I got the parole officer on the dark side telling me, hey, man, if you if you don't tell the truth and put down, you got felonies, motherfucker. And if you don't have a job, motherfucker, I'm violating you, motherfucker. You're going back to level four, motherfucker. And then you got the dude on the right side, the German dude's like, nah, man, I done been out five years, homie, and don't, you don't put, you know, never, never check, yeah, fuck that, bro. Man, listen to me, man, fucking check that motherfucker, un un uncheck that shit. So I started unchecking the box, bro, and I started getting jobs, bro. And then as I start getting higher up in IT, they start doing deeper background checks because as you start doing more network security, firewall security, all that type of stuff, man. Um, triple dab and all this stuff, man. They they doing the background. They going further and further. So what I did, guys, you know, the German dude didn't tell me to do this, so I can't. I'm not going to throw him under the bus. But what I did, guys, somebody told me just to alter my first name just a little bit. So I altered it, which is a lie. I got it. But I needed to fucking, I like getting that big money, so I altered my first name. So then I start passing all the fucking, the fucking background checks, right? Um, so anyway, I was, I was getting, I was getting paid a lot of money, but I wanted to teach guys how to pick up girls. Right. So then when big Herc was like, he's like, yeah, man, let's do the prison channel thing. I had already decided I didn't want to keep working in it, bro. I, so crazy Nick, he really just expedited what I, I had already. I, did, I got tired of nothing. Don't take this the wrong way, guys. I don't judge people, man, but I just know I don't like associating with geeky, nerdy, soft dudes, bro. Because you are who you associate. You are with, you are, what do they say? You're a collection of the, the closest five people in your life. And when I kept going into these corporate offices, working with these fucking geeky, nerdy dudes. So just so you know how IT companies work. You got the geeky, nerdy dudes who write the code, man, and build the servers, bro, and, and build the firewalls and build the websites and build all this content for you fucks who just ain't got shit better to do but watch porn. Geeky, nerdy dudes make porn too, bro. And then you got the hot girls with the the headlights out that sell it to different companies because a lot of ways that the internet works, you got these venture capitalists that invest money into these concept companies. But they have these hot girls sell a proposal. They don't know... They don't know their fucking shit from, uh, they don't know the, the difference between a hole in the ground and their asshole because they're 304, but they're fine as hell, and the saleswomen can sell stuff. But then the geeky dudes is all worshiping them. Oh, me so fine. Can you fart in my face and I'll go down and lick your boots and all this. I got tired of working in that environment. The girl can come to work with a painted on dress and shit, right? Pretty toes out, hair flowing, red lipstick on, big ass lips arching her back bending over and you can't even you can't even 
call her what she is. You can't even say it. I'm not saying call her a 304 in the office. I'm not stupid. But you can't say to her like this. Look, man, Betsy, you look really nice in that dress. Like, it really accentuates your femininity. And I'm for, I am really, really, really feel very fortunate to be a man sitting in front of you. You can't even say that. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. Hey, it was just said like this undertones of, uh, you know I mean, disrespect to women, and that's un unacceptable. Hey, man, I'm just talking to you as a human being, man, so shut the fuck up. She got on a, a spray-painted dress, bro, and she's voluptuous, and she's curving her back as she's over the copier, and it got her ass cheeks spread open. Man, get the fuck out of here, bro. I ain't you, you soft little motherfucker. I'm from another generation, so you'd be like, I got tired of that, so... When Big Hurt checked my paperwork, I went on this channel, I switched my whole genre to prison stuff, bro. So let me tell you, let me tell you where this is going, because I'm getting ready to wrap this up. I, I remember doing the reaction videos from uh, when I was doing the PUA stuff, and it was a lot of my viewers liked it, because I would react to your comments, you feel like I care, you know what I'm saying? So then I reacted to, I reacted to these fucking four trolls on my channel. No, I printed it out like I'm going to read for you today. And I read their names and I said this and that. And these motherfuckers, man, trolls are savages, bro. They went and did all. You can, you man, you can Google anybody, bro. They Googled my shit, bro. Found my real name, my fucking real address and shit, bro. Then they went on Facebook, took my real name with my OG Silverback. Said, oh, he's a felon and he's a murderer and he's a drug dealer and all that. And, bro, I had some loans in banks, bro, worth 200000 I had 100000 with this bank and her because I was going to start my own I was gonna start my own business in L.A., man. Oh, no, one loan was to start my own business in L.A. Another loan was for me that I was going to buy a house in L.A. And, and convert it into a business. You know what I mean? Like, because when you buy a house, if you, if you take um, one room and you put a lock on it, you can incorporate and then you can um, – you can have a tax shelter with your house. You can write it off and you can purchase cars and computers. I know all about tax law, bro. Well, I got accountants. So anyway, bro, and, and then I, uh, I was making uh, I was making $150,000 a year in my IT consulting job. So then with the, the 100 from the one bank and 100 from another bank, that's 350 Gs. So then crazy story in his hordes, bro. They went ahead, bro, because I did this reaction thing. And they just went savage on me, bro. And here's why I'm, here's the problem I got. I know what you guys are going to say. Well, you said that you shouldn't have been making up your name and telling stories and all that. And okay, man, fuck you. If you never lied, bro, if you never lied in your life, I'm talking to all you guys. If you never, ever lied, bro, then you're, you're better than fucking Gandhi, bro. You're, you're the most holiest dude ever, and I'm not the dude for you. But if you ever lied before, who the fuck is somebody else to go and report what you've been fucking lying about if it don't affect them? That's all I'm saying. But anyway, man, I digress. What I'm trying to say is, bro, I learned the lesson, man, like don't do the reaction videos, man. But now, bro, here's the difference, bro. They already done fucked my life off, bro. But see, now with these... uh. These movie producers and directors, this is how I got to this. I got to get ready to go. But this is how I got to this video here. Let me share something with you. I'm smiling now. I'm smiling. I'm going to share something with you, both silly motherfuckers. Look. This is how I know God is good. So whether you want to call him Buddha, Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Hare Krishna, whatever you want to call him, I know he's good because, dude, I paid my dues for my past transgressions. Yeah, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have changed my name to get IT jobs. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I shouldn't have not. I shouldn't have unchecked the felony box and said I never had felonies when I did. You're right. I shouldn't have been telling about fucking war stories that I never did, man, or I'm some super duper hero. You're right. I can't change that, bro. And them dudes fucked me so deep in my culo, bro. That's how I know I ain't gay, man. They fucked me in my culo financially so hard, bro. My reputation. I have 40,000 subs. When Crazy Story and them dudes got done with me, dude, my shit was down to 15,000 subs, bro. And it was only the hardcore grown men who understand, hey, bro, everybody lies, bro. Everybody, bro. If you were saying you ain't never lie, you a liar. Everybody lies. Whether you tell a girl, oh, it's okay if y'all friends, you really know you want to fuck the dog shit out of her, you know what I'm saying? If you tell if, if you tell your wife, you know, she cheated on you and it's okay, even when you want to rip her head off, that's a lie, bro. If you don't report all your financial holdings on your taxes, that's a fucking lie, bro. 
when the fucking when your boss yells at you, bro, and you don't yell back at him. That's a fucking lie, bro. So get the fuck out of here. What I'm saying is, I can't go back and I can only go forward. But here's what the, here's where we get to the brux of the story today, bro. When I went to this uh this movie series, I'm gonna do. I went on Friday and I got the part as the lead bodyguard, bro. There was there was so many. There was a couple producers and directors I worked with before. No, nah, this is how I knew. I went in there and all the ladies love me, bro. And oh, we're so happy you're here. And they increased my pay, and I'm getting my SAG card, my Studio Actors Guilds card, bro. I work with other women that feel comfortable with me. They loving me, taking pictures. I work with other savage dudes. Follow me. I'm not bragging. So then I go back in the back. Everybody loves me, bro. That I'm just doing my thing. Like like all this positivity's coming away. But follow me. I leave out of there. I see another director, man. I'm walking through the I'm walking through the mall here. And uh, in downtown Vegas, this place called Mile High Mall or something. And he's got Planet Hollywood in there. So, so I'm walking down. This famous director hollers out my name. OG Silverback. So I'm with my dude. I was like, hey, what's going on? And he said, yeah. I ain't going to say his name. I'm so-and-so, man. I worked with you before, man. You part of this movie? I was like, yeah. He said, hey, man, I got some other roles for you because I like your vibe, man. So then my dude was like, hey, I'm so-and-so and so-and-so. He said, okay, man, if you with OG Silverback, just you in. So we leaving and shit, and my dude's like, wow, you know that, that dude? That's like, I probably worked with him before. So here's what I'm going to tell you. When I went to this, I did this martial arts movie last night, which I got to get ready to head out. I did this martial arts movie last night. Bro, there was some producers and directors that I worked with before that I didn't know was going to be there. They was there. Some other producers, oh, the, the ones that I worked with before, said, oh, just sit back, man. We, we lost contact with you. We got a lot of projects coming up. We want you to work with us, man, because you savage. Like, you pay the best bad dude ever, man. Like, you just got that character down. And I was like, oh, thanks a lot and everything. And the director was like, yeah, I like the way you take, you know, the directors direct you on how to act and do the fight scene. So follow me. So then some other producers and directors came in, was videotaping me, taking pictures of me. So what I'm trying to say, man, without you guys thinking I'm bragging, because this shit don't mean nothing to me, bro. I'm a martial artist. So what I'm trying to say is this. I can now do these reaction videos, bro, because you motherfucking trolls, man. You motherfuckers can't hurt me, bro. Like David Goggins' book says, you can't hurt me. You hurt me so bad. Like, you guys fucked me so hard in my culo, bro. I cried, bro. I, hey, bro, let me tell you guys something, bro. I'm going to take my fucking glasses off. Let me take Hey, bro. Crazy Nick, man, hurt me so bad, bro, when he got my loans revert, revoked and I lost my IT job, bro. No, I'm from back east, homie. Don't, don't let this West Coast shit fool you. Back east, man. They say the way you want to really hurt a dude, bro, is two ways you can really hurt a, a real man. It's fucking you fuck with his money, bro, or you fuck with his family. And when I say family, bro, I'm talking about the ones you love, like your mom and your kids. And Crazy Nick was talking about raping my underage daughters, bro. Look at me, fellas. It don't matter what I, if I made up stories and none of that shit, bro. Okay, you guys, you liberal, righteous people. Oh, you sit back. You, okay, let's say I agree with you and I shouldn't have done it. But what gives another fucking grown man the right to tell me you're going to rape my underage daughters, man? Or grape whatever YouTube needs me to say. You going to grape my underage daughter, man? Are you out of your fucking mind, bro? And then the motherfuckers still follow him and subscribe to his bullshit after he said that. Now, he, he talking about graping my ex-wife, bro. I could give a fuck. I can give a fuck. She's a 304 anyway, bro. You can have her. But even to say that to a man is disrespectful. But I'm going to talk. Hey, look, right now, man, I'm talking to my, my black brothers, my African-American brothers, my African brothers, my Latino brothers. You know what I'm saying? My Asian brothers and my white brothers, man, my European brothers, man. A grown man tells you, man, oh, man, I'm going to search down your underage daughter and I'm going to defile her body. Hey, my man, you got, you got a right to die viciously, bro. Hey, bro, I cried so frustrated. I contacted Mighty Mouse. I contacted the Underground Fight League. I contacted some other fight league. I have five Gs, and I told them, hey, man, I got five Gs. Wherever you pick the location, wherever, I'm flogging you the money. Make sure that fool got his five Gs. No, nah, so he won't be scared because I told him to come to California. Look, he's uh, he's uh, Nate Dog's homie, Nate Dog the Gangster. That's his homie, and his homie is Dirty Stories. 
They in Cali. They Sacramento, motherfucker. I told them I even meet you in Sacramento, motherfucker. You don't threaten my daughter, dude. Who the fuck are you, man? I don't give a fuck, homie. He didn't want to come up to Sac, bro. He didn't want to come to Cali. So I told him, hey, man. Hey, man, that's Mighty Mouse. He know. I said, hey, man, wherever you want to fly. So this is crazy stories. He made a video. Oh, man, you know, I don't mess with Mighty Mouse. He's a chomo. Well, what do you call a dude? Like, bro, you guys kill me with this convict code talking about, oh, man, you know, convicts don't like child molesters. They don't like rapists. They don't like dudes take other dudes' buttholes. You guys make all these fucking codes and you're fucking full of shit, bro. I've been in prisons and this one I want to tell you guys, man. I probably ain't going to even get to this fucking thing. You guys was telling me like, oh, G. Silverback, you talking about you was on the yard and there's chomos and grapists and cannibals and shit. You was on the PC yard or whatever. Motherfucker, <laughs> you better do your research, dude. In the California penal system and maximum security prison, bro. One third of the cats that's in there for life is chomos and grapers, bro, because they eat their victims. Man, shut the fuck. You guys don't know what you're talking about. And you're talking about, I'm on a PC yard. Let me tell you something, man. The California penal system is so full of fucking uh, sexual predators and offenders, bro. They don't have, you guys is dilute. They don't have special prisons for that. And you listen to your homies telling you these stories. Oh, man, we do this to grapists and child molesters and chomos. Man, okay, bro, them is outlier stories, bro. I'm here to tell you, bro. Look at me, bro. They got gangs of chomos that run around, bro. They're savages, bro. And then the other dudes is doing regular program. It's like, hey, man, them fools ain't mess with our program. They, they ain't going to war over some savage shit they tell you. Over some bullshit they tell you on YouTube, bro, to mess up their money. And them dudes ain't did it to their family, bro. They don't give a fuck, bro. You guys be listening to too many fucking fictionalized war stories. Like they try to they try to glorify prison like it's all these righteous dudes. If it's so righteous, bro, why they got dudes going up in each other's kulos, man? No, for you guys who want to talk all this righteous shit, bro. And I'm not judging people, but I'm just saying. In your life, is it righteous for a grown man to go up in your butt crack? Because you don't have money on your books, bro? Or because you just need somebody to talk to, bro? No, here's what you say, OG. Here's what you say. OG, if it's consensual, it's all good, baby. Okay. That's all I'm saying. If it's all good, baby, right? Then when you get your ass out, then just tell your mama and tell your aunties and tell your uncle, hey, when I was in the pen, man, my homies looked out for me. I just bent over a lot, and they was going up in my culo, and they just did it nice and slow. First, they put the tip in, and then they just eased it in there. Ooh, and you okay, little dude? Yeah, I'm okay. I can take some more. And uh, what do you think about that, family members, familia? I did that. Because, hey, man, it's consensual. You know what I mean? It's just two grown men. Why don't you keep that flow when you get out? Because you gay for the state. And that's a lie, you motherfucker. You can't be man enough or woman enough to tell your homies and to tell your brothers and sisters and cousins you was a bottom boy pillow biter when you are in the fucking pen. Shut the fuck up, man. So anyway, bro, what I'm trying to say, bro, he fucked me so hard, my culo financially, and he threatened my family, bro. I don't know where you other motherfuckers is from. I don't know if you're from down south. I only was stationed there. I don't know where the fuck you from. But when you're from the East Coast like me, like, I don't give a fuck where I live. California, Vegas, Southeast Asia, man, my fucking heart is East Coast, homie, because once you grew up in them harsh winters in the concrete jungle, you can't undo the East Coast, bro. And the East Coast, one thing I can say about East Coast dudes that I can't say about West Coast dude, East Coast dudes is hard to the motherfucking core. Like, yeah, the East Coast dudes might be in gangs. They doing it for money and numbers, but you catch the East Coast dudes by itself. That motherfucker going to go savage because we savages, bro. And you tell the East Coast dude, yeah. I'm going to find your ex-wife and, 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 and do foul things to her. And then I'm going to find your underage daughter. And I'm going to do all kind of foul shit to her. Man, you tell that shit to a dude from the East Coast, man. You lost your fucking mind, bro. And then his subscribers that know about it, they still follow him. So you want to talk about some foul shit. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up real quick. So anyway, I'm back to doing a reaction video because I, yesterday, man, I, I was uh, training with these savages getting all beat up to do this uh, martial arts fight scene. And I was just thinking that, you know what, man? 
I want to honor my subscribers and react to these um <laughs> the trolls and shit on their these comments, right? And the reason I can do it now is because, bro, crazy Nick, none of them can't hurt me because all the producers and directors and the fucking actors and the stunt dudes, they all know about my past. They all know about everything that fucking happened, and they love me. They accept me for who I am, bro. That's why I can just be my fucking self. I finally found a tribe of people who accept me for who I am, and when I go to Southeast Asia, they only accept, <laughs> only barbarians accept it. So you soft troll, non-traveling motherfuckers. Don't even worry about going over there because you'll be you'll be on some you'll be on a cannibal stick as they fucking frying you little bitch ass. So anyway, just so I can stay congruent with what I said I was gonna do, I'm gonna go over my comments right here. So my one comment from Salty Dog said, uh, "I was a glass eater in a traveling circus. Well, after years of glass eating, my anus became filled with lined with glass." This is all I gotta say to you, homie. Uh, I don't judge people, but if you was a glass eater and then now your anus is filled with glass, I mean, you know what I mean? We all got choices and decisions in life, man. It's all about the act, the decisions you make and the actions you take. So, I mean, you're a grown man. Live with your consequences, homie. I don't know how to answer that fucking silly-ass shit, bro. So then here's the next one, man. Hum along if you can't sing along. He said... Jay Williams is that dude that makes me so happy to see this collab. New subscriber to the channel. Thank you for all your work. So anyway, guys, what I did when I first fell out with Nate Dogg and Dirty Weather and uh, I never even knew. I don't even fuck with dudes like Crazy Nick. He's a soft little high yellow motherfucker, bro. He's one of them soft little pretty boys, bro. Can't even shoot a gun straight. So anyway, and I fell out with Big Hurt because... um. You know, I found out that uh, Dirty Weather did a Booty Bandit video. And so then Big Herc was telling me, oh, I can no longer support your channel because you be talking about Booty Bandit stuff. And I'm going in a different level. Even though if you go to Big Herc's channel now and do a Google search, he's talking about Butt Bandit stuff. You guys kill me coming over here talking about, oh, you always talking about Butt Bandit stuff. But the main dude on YouTube is talking about, shut the fuck up. You guys are so fucking wissy-wassy. So anyway, the, the reason I fell out with Big Herc and Nate Dog is when Big Herc told me, oh, I can no longer support you financially. And I'm, I ain't going to lie to you, man. Big Herc was giving me a lot of money off of the YouTube collabs, bro. Like, I made more money with Big Herc in one month. Check this out, guys. I made more money doing a collab with them, them, YouTube, them YouTube videos I did with Big Herc and the ones he let me put on this channel. I made more, much, I made more money with Big Herc in one month than I make all year on YouTube currently. That's how much, dude, I, I really appreciated his support because he would split the money with me, man. That motherfucker, I ain't never seen checks that big off of YouTube. So anyway, when he said that, oh, you know, I can't support you if you're still talking to Booty Bandit stuff because we had agreed I was going to do a Booty Bandit University. For those of you who follow me, you remember it was a big deal over on Fresh Out. Oh, Fresh Out rep, uh, is proud to present OG Silverback Booty Bandit series, right? It was a big deal because I'm the only dude talking about the reality of it. So then Big Herc tells me, oh, you know, man, I can't no longer support you because I'm going corporate or whatever. And you know how you have a come to Jesus talk with yourself? Just like when the producers told me to switch my channel from butt grape in prison to how to pick up girls and make men better. And you have that the tugging of your soul. I was driving back from Sacramento, man, and just Big Herc was in my ear, man. I got home. I was like, you know what, dude? I don't need Big Herc's money because I, I believe young dudes need to know and square dudes need to know all that chivalrous shit they tell me about prison and there ain't no butt grape going on and ain't no homosexuality and all oh, this this car don't play that and this group of people don't play that. Man, it's all the fucking smoke and mirrors. I got my, while, I got, while God gives me strength and breath and life, I'm going to tell you guys the truth until I, YouTube strikes my channel down, takes it until the good Lord strikes me down, bro. Because even if YouTube takes my channel, I'm going to go to Bit Shoot or wherever these other places you've been telling me to go. And I'm going to tell the fucking truth, bro. Because the truth will set your ass free and you won't have to experience love from the homies if that ain't what you want, motherfucker. So anyway, I got home and I just was like, why is Big Herc, man? Acting like that with me. So I just went on YouTube, like the main YouTube page. I did a search for butt grape in prison. Bro, it was so many videos from white dudes, black dudes, Mexican dudes, Asian dudes, 
Russian dudes, Czechoslovakian dudes, whatever the fuck dudes you want to say, Hawaiian dudes, Samoan dudes, whatever. It was such a plethora of videos, and this is what I did because I was ignorant back then. I just there's a tool on there's a tool on um on YouTube where you can download videos and put them into your uh into your channel. So I just downloaded. I ain't gonna lie to you guys. I downloaded about 50 videos from 50 different channels because I was trying to prove a point. I put them on my channel and I blast I blasted them out. So then my phone rings immediately and Nate Dogg's like, "Hey man, uh, somebody hacked your channel, dog." I go, "What do you mean?" Oh man, it's all this weird like butt grape stuff on there. I said, "No, nah, I put it on there." And you know, we had a phone call like a couple months ago because he said I misquoted him, or whatever. But all I know is this: he's like, "Oh, I don't, I don't fuck with silly motherfuckers like you or something like that." And I was like, "Man, I don't fuck with silly motherfuckers like you." And then that's when that whole beef started. And that's when Dirty Weathers decided uh, in his infinite glory to sick crazy nick on me the little bitch ass motherfucker that don't want to show up in person bro after you threaten somebody's underage daughter you little soft fuck so that's how the whole thing started so here's what happened guys um life after prison bro he contacted youtube said oh i'm i'm illegally showing his videos they gave me a strike bro so then it, it, and i contacted him i said hey man I'm, I'm new to youtube i didn't know can you remove the strike because i'm trying to make money man and his little bitch ass didn't respond back. So what I proactively did, I'm just getting to the end of the story. I contacted all the other prison YouTubers and I, I asked them nicely, hey, um, do you mind if I, if I share your video on my channel? Please don't strike me because I'm trying to prove a point. And all of them came, wrote back and said, yeah, Jay Williams wrote back. It's like, nah, bro, you can put my video on your channel, homie. And that's the, that's the video I got on my channel. It's got the most views. And that's the collab because Jay Williams is a cool dude. He's from Philly, bro. And just so you guys know, I lived in Pennsylvania as well. And me and Jay Williams used to be cool, man. I think he's a cool white dude. I'll be honest with you. But, you know, he's got his own way of thinking about stuff. So, anyway, me and Jay was going to do a collab. But then he collab with um, Dirty Weather and them motherfuckers. And I'm like, man, you know, this is what I'd be telling you guys, man. And, you know, no offense against Nate Dogg because I ain't trying to have smoke with him because something's wrong with that dude, man. Nate Dogg don't give a fuck about his job, his family. He on some savage shit, bro. And I'm not saying I'm not on savage shit, but, like, bro, I got too much going on to be dealing with some savage shit I ain't getting paid for, bro. Like, even if even if we do put up 5Gs, ain't no need of me trying to do some hand-in-hand -hand combo, dude. I'm, getting, I'm moving the fuck out of this country. But anyway, I told motherfuckers like this, and this applies to Nate Dogg and Dirty Stories. And this applies to all you motherfuckers. If you got a homie in your mix, right, whether you say you're from the hood or you a G or you, you live by the convict code, if you got a homie in your car, that's what I would say to you square dudes. They talking about, oh, man, you know, grapers ain't loud in our car and, and butt sex, man, and you mess with chomos, right? All that. Listen to me, guys. And, oh, we don't mess with snitches. Listen to me. So then Crazy Stories contacts the fucking military police, bro. He contacts banks, bro, organizations. He contacts my job. And then he tells them what my real name is associated with OG Silverback. I'm a convicted felon and a murderer and a drug dealer, and I'm working in their company. To me, that's snitching, bro. I don't, you, I don't know what you guys want to call it. The rest of you people, whether you square, you a gangster, or whatever. Okay, no. I got problems and issues, bro. You know, I'm a flawed human being. I, I made mistakes, okay? But if you're going to call out my mistakes, let's call out the whole mistakes, bro. A fucking a snitch is a fucking snitch. And you call yourself a convict or you call yourself living by the street code and you report me to the fucking authorities because you don't like the way I conduct myself, bro? <coughs> and you guys want to support them dudes? You go on their channel and sub them with them? Let me tell you like this, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't judge people. But if the people I associate with, somebody comes up to me and goes, hey, man, you know, there's a rumor that Bob messed with this little underage girl, man. She was like 12 years old. He made an R. Kelly video. Look at my face, bro. I got daughters. They're not underage now. I got daughters. I don't play that. I want to make it clear. I don't play that shit, bro. That's one thing I don't play. And dudes taking sex from women and other men. I don't play that, bro. I don't, you know, you can be a cannibal and eat people and torture people and capture them and peel their skin back. I play that. 
to another savage, but to a weak woman and a weak little girl? So they say to me, follow me, guys. Hey, man, there's a rumor that Bob, he made some underage sex videos with these underage girls. He's trying to be the new R. Kelly. So then this is me. Hey, Bob, can I holler at you for a minute? Hey, what's going on? Hey, LG, what's up, man? Hey, hey, Bob, you got a second, man? Yeah, LG, what's popping? Hey, man, can you meet me over at the Denny's, man, off of uh, Decatur and uh, Sunset, man? Yeah, what's going on? Nah, I just want to holler at you, man. The phone's not secure, so you know what I'm saying? This is how I get out. All right. So Bob shows up, man. We had outside of Denny's, man. Bro, we ain't sitting down to break no bread. I said, hey, man, check this out, homie. I done heard some word on the street as you doing this, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you know, man, I just heard, you know, about the R. Kelly thing, so I tried to do some satirical stuff, you know what I'm saying? So I got these underage girls, and I just made this video, you know, this underage girl thing like that. I say, hey, man, that's some weird shit, dude. Nah, but let me explain my side of the story. Nah, ain't nothing to explain, homie. Like, look, bro, you know I got daughters, right? I got fucking granddaughters, right? Hey, man, one, that's so we clear. One thing I don't fuck with is motherfuckers that I don't care if it's a joke, satirical, whatever. You understand? No, nah, but you know what I'm saying? No, nah, bro, check it out, bro. I'm just telling you like this, homie. I no longer want to associate you because you on some weird shit. Like, you can't even rationalize that, bro. And just so we clear, man, don't ever associate my name with you no more. Don't speak my name out of your mouth. And if there's a problem, homie, we can handle it right now because I want us to be clear. Don't ever tell anybody you know me or you so. Don't speak my name again, bro, and we done. Delete my fucking number. And we outside of Denny's, guys. If there's a fucking problem, we deal with it. But I want us to be clear. We are done. That's how I fucking roll. So Nate Dogg and uh, fucking Dirty Weather, they still fucking with Crazy Nick. You guys make your own decision, bro. About, you want to talk about righteousness, bro, and, and being a savage in the code. And you don't fuck with people that lie and all this fucking shit, bro. Either you a savage or you not. You, you, you can't walk the fence. So anyway, I said all that to tell you about Jay Williams. So anyway, this other dude goes, this other dude goes, uh, Hill Gill says, no, no, this dude, uh, Aaron Daly says, good video, OJ, as always. Thanks a lot, bro. He's open to the knowledge, right? This other dude says, uh, dang, bro, I'm trying to, hold up, bro. I'm trying to get through these really quick because my video's getting long. Uh. Lord Bob Manuel, he says, what's up, OG? What's up, homie? And then uh, Las Vegas Beat says, hmm, I accidentally clicked on this, and why the hell is it in my YouTube? Well, maybe you need to learn about the truth about what your husband does when he's in the pen, lady. And so then Daniel says, uh, switch up the content a bit, bro. You always talking about them chicks. Okay, Daniel, check this out, bro. I don't know if you've been following me long, bro. And I want to tell the rest of you YouTube dudes, man. Check this out, man. I'll be doing motivational morning quotes. That ain't about cheeks. I'll be doing nocturnal pre predictive programming so your subconscious helps you to become a better man. That ain't about cheeks. I'll be doing videos about the easiest girls to bust their cheeks. And when I say girls, I mean women because to me, I'm 61. Hey, man, all women are fucking... Little girls trapped in a woman's body. That's why they're so irrational and so fucking entitled because their fucking fathers brought them up to be little little princesses. And then once they reach the age of maturity, they still want to act like a little princess. Check this out, ho. Either you're a queen or you're not. You can't be a... There's a difference between a princess and a queen. A princess is an underage little girl who gets her way. A queen is a powerful woman, dude, who knows how to align herself with powerful men. So shut the fuck up, man. So then... uh. Um, also, man, let me see here. Worldwide View Warfighting says, what OG is saying makes perfect sense to me and it confirms some of my social engineering research. Prisoners are often experimented on and there is largely nothing they can do about it if they are even aware. So much of the sociopathic and deviant behavior we see in today's society is basically the normalization of prison lifestyles. Hey, man, you hit that on the head. It's called the urbanization of the West, bro. And all urbanization is, man, there's a, there's a video clip on Valuetainment with this dude named Steve Knight. 
and they talking about black on black crime. And this Colombian lady's got the nerve, or she's Italian or something. She's got the nerve to be like, "Oh, white people kill each other, and Mexican people kill each other, and Chinese people kill each other." Hey, man, it ain't the same, man. With the fucking the urbanization of America, what they go, they do they, these impoverished neighborhoods. They go into these hoods, bro, and they they inculcate these dudes, these young black dudes, with this rap culture of you know smoke people that look like you and kill people that look like you and sell drugs to people that look like you, bro. But you won't go outside the other neighborhoods. So then it's proliferated. So ladies, shut the fuck up. So then this other dude, man. Uh, Rondreas Bates says, LOL, this dude's crazy. I keep playing the end. Yeah, I am crazy, man. Something's wrong with me. I've known that for years. I'm in counseling, guys. So then Laura Ladora McCall says, some pretty guys are not so pretty inside. That's true. I was just saying that. Pretty boys, man, and pretty guys, they get pretty girl privilege. And you guys that can't under you guys that are normal guys like me or ugly guys like me, you'll never understand that. But being I had pretty dudes in my family, I see how they're treated like pretty women. There's a thing called pretty privilege for women. And if you lived in LA, bro, like Southern California, with these hot actresses, they get in the nightclubs free, they get on the yachts free, they get into the VIP section free, they get in the videos, making all this money, shaking their ass without having any talent, bro. They get into fucking movies because they pretty. It's all kind of shit, bro. Pretty dudes get the same privilege and shit. But then they're, when, when a person gets everything based on their looks, you don't get to develop your character. So Lador is right. And then Lador McCall says, this guy wishes he could be fly as you are. Hey, thank you very much. But I want to say this to all of you guys, man. The 80% of you guys that support me, man, I got love for you. I appreciate you, dude. You know, I appreciate you seeing the hard work I put in for you guys. And the 20% of you guys that are trolls, man, stop hating, bro. See, man, hate is a negative thing. When you hate others, you actually hate yourself. But you're too young and stupid to know that. So fuck you, man. And so then uh, Ron Dre's bait says, he just, he just talking about things he's seen. People have different experiences in the prison system. Some people are fortunate they didn't have to deal with hostile prison environments. I want to make this clear on this video. I got one more page. I want to make this clear. So everybody understands. I am number one. I am not gay. Number two, nobody ever ran up at me. And here's how you know. When I was in the pen, bro, I was in five different prisons. Motherfuckers, man, I got a distinctive look. I'm telling you, my head is so large. I'm like a Nephilim, bro. I got a big ass head, bro. It either works for me or against me. But people were always recognizing me, bro. So here's what happens. If I had gotten my culo busted, there would be dudes... Making not just comment on my videos, they've been making videos about, yeah, man, OG Silver back guy ran up and I, I remember back in 1997 and he was hollering like a little girl, right? That's number one. Number two, I'm going to be serious for a minute. Hey, man, guys who have had their culo taken forcefully, bro, they don't talk about it, bro, just so you know. No, I'm, I'm not talking to you want to be gangsters and gangbangers and shit because you be all in your feelings hurt because I'm telling the truth about what happens to your homies and to you, maybe. I'm talking to you square dudes. Let's talk logically as men, just so you know, bro. I used to be an engineer, bro. I got a master's degree in information technology. I got a master's degree in psychology, bro. Like, I understand because psychology and computers work the same. That's why I can do both, a double major. Let's talk logically as men. If a man forcefully goes up in your culo cheeks, bro, that you don't want it done, it's going to give you psychic trauma scars. You not, you can't even talk about it, bro. So the fact that I can talk about it, bro, come on, man. You guys need to wake up, bro. Ain't nobody ever went up at me because I would die, bro. No, I would die. Like, maybe I can't, you know, I can't fight five or seven dudes. That's why I always, when they send a torpedo to me, bro, I always broke his ass off so properly so the other people knew, like, fuck, bro. When they send the next torpedo, like, hey, man. You see what he did to Bob? <laughs> we don't play that shit, Vato. Raul, you next. When he comes out the hole, you go and see him. You know what Raul does? He takes his bitch ass and PCs up because he saw what I did to Bob. He's like, man, fuck that shit. It ain't that serious. So I'm just letting you know, man, for you logical thinkers, a guy that's been traumatized or violated in prison ain't going to talk about it because he can't. If you're a real man, you can't talk about it. Here's the next one. Daniel says, Switch up content, bro. You always talk about them cheeks. I already covered that, bro. I'll be talking about other stuff, too. It's just you all in your feelings and everything. And, uh, hey, man, if you guys like this type of a format, you know, let me know because uh, it went over an hour. 
And I don't want to waste your time like God. You guys be like, oh man, you know he he wasted all my life. If you if you like it, let me know in the comments. And if you don't, I won't do them anymore. So anyway, take care of yourself, guys. Have a good day. I got to go over to this movie set.